workbook is where I'm starting. <clears throat> and uh, this is a reminder that this is our schedule. We're going to have a, a quiz on, on Friday. So it'll be a quiz. I'm thinking I'm going to give you two attempts. All right. And you can, uh, the, your best score is what's going to go in the grade book. We'll try that. We'll try that. It's, it's a lot of voting methods. I want you guys to practice it, get it perfect, because we're going to have a similar test next week. Does that sound like a good idea? You guys okay with that? And I don't want you to knock yourself out, you know, doing the quiz, spending all your time on the quiz, but it, it'll be good practice for you. Um, so let's look at this. Let's look at this. All right, so we, uh, this is the bottom of page 13, right below the basketball eight people. We talked about board account. Board account is a special ranking system. We talked about rank method. And the rank method can be anything. It can be anything in a, in a problem. It can be any score for first place. It can be any score for second place. Any score for third place. Um, you just have to look at the instructions in the problem. Or score is a special case where if you have and candidates, like the, the first place, points is going to give is going to you're going to figure that out by putting n in this equation and that's how many points you get so for example if we got if we got four candidates then my n is four and when i plug it in for n when i solve this four minus one is three so every first place vote it's going to get three points. And then with board score, board account, it just reduces. It just reduces. So the next second place is going to be two points. First place is going to be one point and zero points to fourth place. Now, fourth place, if there's four candidates, you guys got to remember fourth place is like last. Last. So it's not, it's not, it sounds good. I finished fourth in my race. No, you didn't. You finish last in the race, okay? So let's look at some examples. This preference schedule, this is a preference schedule. This preference schedule is made up of individual votes. There are not multiple votes here. This doesn't say five votes, four votes, nine votes. It, it, it identifies one individual voter, and each one of these columns is their preference ballot. So there, there's one vote each time. So again, there's four candidates. So my N, let's see the four. And when I plug in for my board account, four minus one is three. Points. So first place gets three points. That's what I did here. And then it just reduces by one until zero. Now I can do, I can do this. So you look at each of these candidates in their positioning in their preference schedule. And I have A, I have candidate A, candidate B, candidate C, and candidate D. All right, now I look to count how many first place votes they each have. Let's look at this. So A, got, they've got one first place vote. And every first place vote is worth three points. So three points goes right under voter A's column. 
I'll go next here. This is both. This is this is candidate D. Candidate D has won two first place votes. So two times three points is going to be six. Then I go to the next one. B has got one first place vote. And so B is going to get three points under their name. And then candidate C also has a first place vote. So they get three points. So I'm done tallying my first place votes. And I go to second place. Candidate B has one, two, three second place votes. Each second place vote is worth two points. So three times two is six. And then A has two second place votes. So two times two is, is four. So we put those points right under the candidate's name. So now I gotta do I gotta do third place votes. Well, candidate D has won third place vote. <clears throat> and that we put one under their name and their column. Well, I'm sorry, that should have been C. C has, oh, I did that right, I did that right, I looked at the fourth place. It's easy, there's a lot of information up here in these preference schedules, so take your time. Um, and then I look at candidate C here by vote of two, and there's one, two, three third place votes. So three times one is three points for candidate C. And then, and then my last candidate, I haven't tallied yet, is candidate A has got a third place vote. And so you, you're going to add these up. When you add these up, this is called the border score. And whoever has the biggest border score is going to win the election. Okay, so let's look at this. So three plus four plus one is eight. Three plus six is nine. Three plus three is six. And the D has seven. So who has the biggest border score? Yeah, candidate B. So candidate B wins. They win the election. All right, so that was kind of timely, right? That took me a little bit of time, right? Doing a little algebra, figuring out how many first place votes, how many second place votes, multiplying by the points. But well, we have a visual way I can show you that's really slick. And what you do is you, you count, you're gonna simply count all the boxes below that candidate. You gotta believe me that, that this works in every column and it's, it's like magic. It's like magic. Okay, so I'm going to just start with candidate A. So here's candidate A in green. How many boxes in the column are below candidate A? Well, there's one, two, three. All right, then you go to the next column. Candidate A is right here. There's one, two boxes below. Candidate A in column three, there's two boxes below that. Candidate A has, has one box below them. In the last column, there's nobody below candidate A, so that's a zero. Now add these up. What do you get? So three plus two plus one plus zero. That's eight. Well, that's what we that's what we tallied up. Not coincidence. Let's try it again. Let's look at candidate B. Candidate B in this first column has two boxes below them. There's no boxes below him in this one, so he's got zero. But then candidate B is in the first position, so there's three boxes below them. There's two boxes below them here, and two boxes below them here. And so we add this up, two plus three plus zero plus two plus two is it's nine, and that's what they run with. Now this only works with these single individual votes. If I have multiple voters here, this technique, this visual counting of boxes is not gonna work. But it goes really, it goes really fast visually if you wanna 
do that or use this for board account. Questions on that? All right. So unfortunately, that's one thing that's really good about this system, this method. But unfortunately, it's got a fatal flaw. And the fatal flaw, it doesn't hold up to a property we call the independence of irrelevant alternatives. And what that means is that it's abbreviated ILA, independence of irrelevant alternatives. And, and it's a system that if it's impossible for candidates who lost the election to be, suddenly become the winner without at least one vote reversing the order in which they had the winner and X ranked in, okay? I'm gonna show you an example of this. This is why, this is one of the flaws of border, of border count. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the example and that's on the next screen. So this is just a normal example. Notice I've got my preference schedule. These are individual votes. So I can I can use my my visual box count counting method that we talked about. So I have three candidates this time: A, B, C. So my N is equal to three. So N is equal to three, and so my points that are assigned in the border score is N minus one, and so I just plug in N as three. When I plug that in, three minus one is two. So, so the first place vote, first place voting gets two points. The, the people in the second place get one point. And, and, and again, third place, that's last. They don't get any points there. You know, it sounds like you did really well. I, I, I finished third in my race. Well, are the three runners or are three players? That, that, that's last, okay? Let's look at this. So I'm gonna do the box, box cutting method. A is my first candidate that I'm counting. So how many boxes are there below A in the first column? Two. Two. Second column. Two. Third column. Two. How about the fourth and fifth? Yeah. So now we add these up. What do you get? That is the board of score for candidate A. That is the border score for candidate A. Let's do candidate B now. How many boxes are there below candidate B? There's, there's two? Oh, wait, wait. There's one. How about here? One. How about here? One. Here. One. So now I add these up. Now let's do C. I'll see he's got nobody below them here. What about these last two? So two and two, and that's four. So <clears throat> the border score, who's got the biggest number? Who wins here? Yeah, A. A has got the most in the border score. So A wins. All right. This is the original example. So A wins here. It's their border score is the biggest. So now this is the law. I'm gonna change two of the votes. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna switch this order to B and C. And it, it shouldn't really matter. It shouldn't really matter because these B and C, candidate B and C didn't win the election, right? A won. It shouldn't matter that we were changing the votes of two candidates that, that didn't win it. It's, it's irrelevant, right? Well, let's see. When I switch the order here of these last two voters, what's going to happen? So A won this one. You think you guys think A is going to win again? Well, it shouldn't matter, right? Because B and C weren't even in it. Well, let's look. Again, we're doing box down counting methods. So A here has got two boxes below them and zero boxes below them here. So A has six, that's a big number. How many think, how many think A is gonna win in this, this example? Nobody? Nobody's gonna fall for it? 
Let's look at B. B's got one box, one box, and then it's got two boxes here. Add this up. What do you get? You get seven. And C doesn't have any boxes below them here. And then it's got one box below them, each point in that column. And so B, C has, has two. And again, this is their Borda score. So who has the largest Borda score? B does. Isn't that crazy? So the fact that B is the winner and that candidate A is now a loser is not independent of where candidate B and C were. Therefore, irrelevant votes are going to make a difference. And the uh, the ILA is not met. It's not met. Okay. Questions on that? So that's one of the fatal flaws of the board account. Of the board account. What's that? Yep. There's there's a bunch of these. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about two more here. Next one we're gonna talk about is is the hair system. Is the hair system. Okay. All right, next page. This one you're gonna like. It's really it's kind of nice. I think I think it's slick. So the hair system, H A R E. It, 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 what it, you do is you eliminate, eliminate or, or delete the candidate that has the fewest or 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 least votes least or, or fewest first place votes. So you're gonna look at all the first place standings, okay? And, that, and then you repeat this, you're gonna repeat this until you have a winner. You're gonna repeat this until you have a winner. So in some cases you're gonna, you could read Chapoy, one of the remaining candidates all have the same, amount of votes and if that's going to happen if that's going to happen and then you're going to have to declare a tie because it didn't work and there's no there's no alternative trick or solution to try to determine a winner then we just we just say you know what it's it, it's tie it could be a, it could be a two-way tie it could be a three-way tie this is how it works it's also known as single transferable voting system. It was created in like the 18, 1861 by Thomas Hare. I said, so he, he's named it, he's named after it. Maybe if you guys discover something, a technique, a system, maybe they'll name it after you. In this particular case, Thomas Hare got this voting method named after him. So, this is used in some other countries. In Australia, they use this to elect political officials. In Malta, the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, this is used in political elections. So let's look at this. So you're only gonna look at first place votes here. So I got, again, I've got three candidates. I've got candidate A, I got candidate B, and I got candidate C. And then, and then I'm only looking at the first place votes. Okay, so whoever's in first there, they get all those votes. So here's five votes. This is a multiple, this is a preference schedule that has multiple voters here. So A gets those five votes. Now C, they get those four votes because they're at the top of the list. Candidate B gets those three votes. And then and, and the last, uh, this last one, A, gets one more vote. So who has the most votes? A does. 
So then what you do is you also got to look at who has the least votes. You got to look at who has the least votes. So, so A is winning right now, right? What you do is you eliminate the candidate that has the least votes. And that's B, right? They got the least votes. So you, 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 you eliminate them, you delete them. And then you go to your preference schedule and everywhere you see candidate B, you scratch off their name. So now, so now I know what you're thinking. Well, who, what's gonna happen to the three votes that candidate B had? Who, who, who's gonna get those? Well, the next person in that line, candidate C is gonna get those three votes. So we just redistribute, redistribute those three votes and look what happens. Candidate C is just edge out candidate A. Candidate C is the winner. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna delete or eliminate candidate A because we've already declared a winner. Because if those votes are gonna go to C, candidate C, it's, candidate C is gonna win regardless. So I don't have to do that last step. I don't have to eliminate that, that second candidate. When, when you get down to two candidates, you're gonna have a winner or you're gonna have a tie. And if you, you see if this would have been a three-way tie, there would have been, I wouldn't have been able to eliminate anybody. All right, let's do another example. This time I'm gonna do, well, here, I have to evaluate this. This is the uh, CWC is the Condorcet's winner criteria. This is on page 10 in your notes. The Condorcet winner criteria, CWC. Now what this means is that Condorcet and that, that's so popular. It was kind of a standard back in the, the, the early times and i think it still is a standard and then they just want to see how this new voting system stands up to the conversation method and so they, if, if you get the same what this is asking are you going to get the same result if you use the conversation method or not let's see if we do and if we do get the same winner then, then we say it, it it passes the CWC criteria. So this is simply asking when it when when it does it meet the CWC standards or does it meet the countersets winner criterion is like do we get the same result? That's what it's asking. So who won the last one? It was it was candidate C, right? So if candidate C wins by us doing Congress A method here, then we say that the system passes the CWC criteria. So let's look at this. So when we do Congress A, it's just one on one, and we can start anywhere. I can say A versus B, and so all. The votes are going to get in here. So A gets the first five, B gets the four, B gets the three, but A gets the one. So this is six. B wins here. B wins the first round. Now, so I've got to play B, B, can it B versus can it C? So can it B gets the first five? But candidate C gets those four, and candidate B gets those three, and candidate B gets the last one. So this is nine to four. So candidate B wins. So last time candidate C won. Using Condorcet method, candidate B wins. So this, this fails the CWC. Because because B won in the last example, C won. So that's that's just comparing the voting system to, to counter say method. That's all. Um, 
So in addition to having failed this, the, the counter say the CWC criterion, the hair system also fault fails monotonicity. And then, and we talked about this the first day. We talked about how do we evaluate voting systems? Well, are they are they fair? Is it a, is a fair system to the voters? Are all candidates uh, equal equally treated or treated equally? And then the third condition was: Is it monotone? Is that and that's if you take the vote from one of the losing candidates and you give it to the winning candidate, and the win but that the winning candidate should still win, right? It shouldn't make a difference. The guy, the person that you're taking the losing vote from, is still going to lose, and that just makes the winner look even better, right? It, it should still win that election if a second election was was given. That's what monotonicity is. It, it's, it's, it's the fact of being monotone, right? And this is, this is on your first page in your notes. All right, let's see this. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at an example. Hey, wait, Mr. Bloom, what did the yellow say on the last page? Um, let me look. Let me see. Connor says winner winner criterion. That's on page page ten. It's in your it's in your student workbook. Some of this stuff we introduce it and then, and then and then it spirals in to the later stuff we start talking about. Now we're going to be talking about voting systems till the end of the year. So get, get learn, learn these because we're going to become critical of, of them and we're going to look at the, the advantages and the flaws and you guys are going to become election experts maybe you'll work on someone's campaign someday that would be exciting so let's look at this next example so we're going to illustrate that the hair system fails monotonicity and i'm going to run this just like normal i'm going to run this just like normal so again, these are number of voters. So each one of these is a, is a voter here. So I got nine votes. I got six votes. I got five votes. I got four votes, and I got two votes. So I've got four candidates here. So when we do hair system, we're going to do a round one, all right? Because there's four candidates: W, X, Y, and Z. Well, W gets nine votes. X gets those six votes. Z gets those five votes. Uh, y, they got four votes plus these two votes. So four plus two is six. All right. So we eliminate the candidate with the least amount of votes. And so who is that? Who has the least amount of votes? Yeah. Candidate Z. So we eliminate him, he's gone. And then we go through the preference schedule and everywhere we see candidate Z, we scratch him off the schedule. And now candidate Z had five votes. And so we look at who is next in line in that column and it's candidate X. So candidate X gets those five votes. So now we go to a route two. And we just we're just going to add these up. W still this has nine votes. Right here. No, it's got to be the column that I just scratched it off. These votes are already are already belong to W. Z did not get any votes here. Z did not get awarded any votes here. Y took them. So Z, you only look at the first place. Those are the votes that are, that are that got eliminated. There's five votes here I, I eliminated that need to be awarded to somebody. And to decide where that award goes to, you look at where that Z got the votes, where Kevin and Z got those votes, and that's in the third column. Well, X was the second place finisher. So X is going to get those votes. You now X had six. Now they have 11. They're, they're in the lead right now. Why still in this? Well, why only has six now? 
And because they have the least amount of votes, candidate Y gets eliminated. So Y is gone. You go to your preference table and you scratch Y off. Now look, you look at the first place position where I scratched off candidate Y, and there's four votes there. And who's next in line? Well, we scratched out Z. So Z's not in it. So we're going to skip over him. But X is in line to get those votes. So I'm going to add four more to X. And then Y got scratched off. And there's two more votes here in this column. And the next person in line is X. So I add those to candidate X also. Now round three, we take a look here who has the most votes. And W has still got nine. W still has nine votes. And X now has, has 11 plus four plus two, X at 17. Well, now it's between two voters. And who's got the most votes? X wins. All right. So that is the system. And I'm going to show you why this fails monotonicity. So th this last column represents two votes, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the order of X and Y. So X1, the last one, right? X was in second here. So I'm going to put X in first place. So, so it looks like X is going to benefit, right? X is going to benefit from this. Because we we just put her put candidate X in a more favorable position. So if we ran we ran this election, we took a we took a vote from a losing candidate, candidate Y, and we and we and we put X in a more favorable position. Candidate X is in the first 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 row. So candidate X, according to monotonicity, candidate X should should rewin this this election. So let's look to see what happens. So you're going to look at first place votes. So W, candidate W again has nine. Candidate X has six there. Candidate Z has five. Candidate Y has four. And candidate X, because we moved him up, he gets two more. So you see, it, see up here, candidate X only had six. Well, now candidate X is starting off with eight for round one because we moved him up in this last column. So you think that would favor him, right? He should win this because he got, he got, more, he got more votes. But let's see what happens. Again, you're gonna eliminate the candidate with the, uh, with the least amount of votes. Let's, let's look. Well, candidate Y has the least votes with four. So you go through the preference schedule, we scratch candidate Y off. All right, so candidate Y was that first place right, right up here with these four votes. So the next person in line, the next candidate in line is gonna get those votes. And that's candidate Z. So we add those four votes to candidate Z. Now we go to round two. So W still has nine votes, X has eight votes, and Z now has nine votes. Well, they're, they're tied for the lead. Well, according to the hair system, now we got to eliminate the candidate with the least votes. Well, who is that? Candidate X. Candidate X won the other election. We moved him up in a more favorable spot. In this round, we just eliminated him because he has the least votes. So now we scratch him off the list. He's out of the race. So now we have to redistribute eight votes. So six votes here goes to the next person in line. And that's candidate Z. X got these two votes. 
So the next candidate line is candidate Z. So Z gets two more votes. Now we go to our round three and we tally up our votes. So round three, W has, has nine votes. X was eliminated. Z has 17 and is our winner. Isn't that crazy? It, the hair system fails monotonicity. Where <clears throat> so I move X in a more favored position. It should help him. I moved him up in the ranking for those two votes. He got two more votes to start with. He started with eight instead of six. But yet he got eliminated the second round and ended up losing the election to candidate Z. Isn't that crazy? Okay, that's what I wanted to show you today. So look at page, the problems on page 18 through uh, 21, I guess 22. If you haven't started on those, you should be working on them. I will uh, talk about those tomorrow. Any questions? A video? I'll do a video. Yeah, I'll put a video together for the answers. I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll have at least the first two pages done today and online in today's module. Everybody knows that the, that the notes are being taped and then there's a hard copy that you can download if you're behind or you miss or you, you fell asleep, you weren't paying attention. There, there's ways you can catch up on Canvas. It's in the module, it's in today's module. It, it probably won't get published till three o'clock, but it'll be there for you tonight. All right, that's what I got. No questions, you guys got this?